lost generation so some people I think doubt the concept of the lost generation I formed it out of experiencing all this stuff firsthand and when I did that I took measure of the people their actions and the state of the world that we're in and a lot of people will not accept my stories and evidence because it's supposedly anecdotal and you'll see a big preference for people to only believe so-called studies published in some form of propaganda mill usually the mainstream news so I rounded up some articles and some studies that were published all in mainstream news sources so let's take a look at the first one here our first article comes to us courtesy of CNN the title of the article is IQ scores are falling and have been for decades new study finds the article goes on to detail that most of the West has IQ scores which are falling and have been for quite some time and it says it's not that dumb people are having more kids than smart people to put it crudely it's something to do with the environment because we're seeing the same differences within families so it's actually declining within families and then it says that it's because of environmental factors like changes in the education system and media environment nutrition reading less and being online more what more do you need to know some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about and that we have talked about with the lost generation project is how lackluster the education system is it's a it's become a complete joke an absolute joke it's such a joke that I got high and slept through all of it and still performed really well how is that even possible I never had to study nothing and you can basically not fail now and if you go to college you can basically buy whatever degree you want yeah there's some fields of studies that are a lot tougher like you know medical and law but some of these college courses and liberal arts things and they basically just become paper mills that the government backs the payment for elementary school grade school complete joke with this common core stuff it's laughable our next article comes from NPR.org the title of the article is Millennials may be losing their grip what this article talks about is how Americans today women and men have a lower grip strength than people in America 30 years ago so quite literally we are physically weaker than those that came before us so just with these first two articles we've seen that we're getting dumber and we're getting weaker let's move on to the next article and our next article is coming to us from the New York Post the title is college ads cry closet for stressed out students and the whole premise of this article is the University of Utah has installed cry closets so students that are stressed out can go and cry in them what is going on here college students should be in their late teens and early twenties they should not be crying under a little bit of stress and even if you can say that okay it's okay to cry under stress the level of stress that's issued by going to school should be pretty minimal there's a lot harder things in life you're going to have to deal with than studying and meeting deadlines and failing or passing a test I mean these are truly first world problems people we have another article coming from CNN 
titled Modern Life Rough on Men. The article goes on to detail how testosterone levels in U.S. men has declined by 22% between 1987 and 2004. Who knows how much farther it's went from 2004 until now. But men are actually being emasculated in a physical sense. And let's move on to another article here. Oh boy, this is a this is a, a rough one. Coming from Washington Post, the title is "The Shocking Number of Americans Who Can't Cover a Four Hundred Dollar Expense." And what this is about is forty six percent of Americans do not have enough money to cover a four hundred dollar emergency. They'd have to put it on a credit card and pay it off over time or borrow it or not pay it at all. So half of America is so broke they can't come up with a half to two thirds of a break job on demand. I mean four hundred dollars really isn't a lot of money in today's economy. Let's just be real. And our next article comes from the Washington Post. Title of the article is The Simple Message from the Trustees of Social Security and Medicare. And it talks about how these systems have deteriorated over time and are coming unfunded. And that date has moved up to 2026. And what that means is when it becomes unfunded, it's going to have to rely directly on incoming payments. And the article stresses it absolutely stresses, just to make you comfortable. It does not mean that either program is broke or can't pay benefits. Most of the funding for these insurance programs comes through payroll and income taxes levied on current incomes. Therefore, even if the trust funds go to zero, about three-quarters of Social Security and 90% of Medicare benefits will be financed by dedicated revenue. It also goes on to detail that you will be receiving re reduced and more austere benefits from these programs. And it does not go on to talk about how there's an incredible amount of aging population. The baby boomers are going to be retiring here. Um, actually, they currently are, but over the next few years. And how a lot of the younger people coming up don't have the same type of income levels and thus tax payments into the system. So... It was all a Ponzi scheme to begin with, but it's starting to have a strand on the cable unravel here and there. Okay, and the last thing I would like to go over with these links is usdebtclock.org. At the current time, I'm recording this audio, we are just shy of $22 trillion in national debt. That works out to just about $180,000 per taxpayer. Now, federal spending in a year is just short of $4.2 trillion, leaving us with an $850 billion budget deficit. Now, let's go into why that's a problem. This is becoming a problem because federal tax revenue is 3.3 trillion dollars per annum and we are also paying 342.4 billion dollars just to service our debt if we look at state debt the states have a debt of 1.2 trillion and if we look at municipalities and cities they have a debt of 1.86 trillion and if we look at unfunded pension liabilities you're talking almost six and a half trillion so if you really add all these numbers up we are absolutely screwed even if they wanted to tax someone at a hundred percent for the next decade and get rid of a lot of these programs we're still screwed when 
we have a deficit of approaching a trillion. We have no way of increasing those tax revenues by enough to cover the deficit. And it's 340 plus billion dollars a year just to service the outstanding debt. Folks, we are in trouble. And then you look at the local debts, almost 1.9 trill. And a lot of these places are absolutely flagging. I mean, almost every city I've done an economic report on is absolutely broke. And if they didn't have the ability to borrow more money from the federal government, we would be in big trouble. Once you add in unfunded liabilities, our national debt's around $100 trillion. So all you maniacs on the left and the right out there that demand all these different programs, interventions, wars, you're out of your mind. You never even touch the fundamentals of how financially sound this country is. There's a limit to how much you can borrow and how much you can print. Okay, just to sum up here, what is evidence like this stating? That the current generation is dumber on average, is weaker on average, is more indebted on average, and has less hope on average than those that came before us. And it's not all our fault. A lot of these problems were set up by those that came before us. But if we don't recognize this, we're never going to be able to address it. And a lot of this has been done intentionally. And I know a lot of people out there don't put, connect the dots together to see how it's all been done intentionally. But there is a process called ideological subversion. And it's important to understand. Our country has been going through a process of ideological subversion for a long time. And we combine that with millions of people that have lived in prosperity, it is absolutely damning. And we need to recognize this before we're ever going to be able to fix anything. And if we can look at the current positions and paths that the so-called political parties are taking, they're all going to lead us to ruin. If we don't turn things around the way we've been doing them, we're all headed for eventual ruin. I mean, the, the debts are staggering. Absolutely staggering. Most people don't realize that almost every municipality or city is bankrupt. Most people don't realize that we're fast approaching the point where the cost to service the debt will be enough to crush us. And us as individuals, we aren't doing much better. Most of us are broke. Most of us have become accustomed to living the debt lifestyle. Years ago, there used to be stigma attached to taking benefits or freebies or having big debts, unjust debts. That's all gone. People think that you can't live without debt now. And apparently our government feels the same. But we are going down a long, grinding road and we're going to end up as a crumbled banana republic. And I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up at some point in our future like Venezuela. But that's what this project is here to address, is a lot of these shortcomings we just talked about with these articles. If the things I talk about make you uncomfortable, then go find a cry closet, because I'm not making this stuff up. And don't get mad at me for being the messenger. Go read your mainstream news sources. All this stuff is in there. Lost Generation. Where